Hey guys, it's Jaden Clark here from Jazz Lesson Videos and today I want to go over one chord vamps. So we see one chord vamps in all kinds of music all the time. So I'm going to go over a few phrases and concepts today to really help spice up our playing over one chord vamps. The phrases and concepts I'm going to cover are some phrases and concepts that I actually worked on with Chad when I was in college and they really helped get my playing over one chord vamps up to speed. If you'd like a copy of the phrases that I play today, go ahead and check out the 68 Phrases and One Chord Vamps PDF package by Chad LB. Okay, so let's jump straight into this and I hope you dig it. Okay, so the first concept over one chord vamps that we're going to check out is going to be called implied harmony. So what does it mean to deal with implied harmony? What does it mean to imply harmony? Well, it's exactly as the name might suggest. When you're implying harmony, you are implying some other harmony over the harmony that you would otherwise be playing. So for example, take a look at this phrase that I'm just about to play. You can see that the phrase implies that there is a 2-5 to the 1. So what that means is the chord player, or the rhythm section, is going to be playing that one chord vamp, and you in your line are going to imply, you're going to play that D minor 7, G7 to C major 7. Here's what the phrase sounds like. Okay, so let's just look at this phrase a little closer now. The phrase starts on the fifth and we move nicely up the scale. And of course, remember we're dealing with C major seven here. You can see it descends down to the fifth and I like to think of this second bit kind of like a C major pentatonic, which we'll get into a little more uh, as we move throughout this video. So the notes from that C major pentatonic, we've got the fifth there on beat three, move down to the third, the ninth, and then the root, and that's before moving to the fourth of C major seven, but of course we are implying that two five. Okay, so we're going to be implying that D minor seven. So the fourth of the C major seven is actually the minor third of that D minor seven. Okay, now, so this important measure, we start from the third, we move down to the fifth, the seventh, and then the ninth. So we're dealing with a minor nine arpeggio there, which clearly outlines, clearly implies the D minor seven before moving to the fifth of the G seven. So the fifth, the third, and then the root. So we've got a nice G triad where we're implying that G seven, and we've got that triplet embellishment that resolves nicely to the third of the C major seven. And of course, to finish off that phrase, we've got a nice embellishment there running up the scale and resolving to the major seven and then to the root. So of course, when you're dealing with implied harmony, you don't always have to stick to inside harmony like we have here now. Of course, you can imply any other harmony that you want, quite frankly. What matters is when you're dealing with implied harmony is that you want to make your resolution to the one chord, the one chord that is vamping, you want to make that resolution as clear and as confident as you possibly can. You're going to notice that the resolution in all of these phrases is going to become a common theme as we move throughout and we take a look at more of them. Okay, so that's a perfect segue into our next concept, outside substitutions. So like I mentioned just before, you can imply any harmony over any other harmony if you really want to. And now we're going to be dealing with some implied harmony that is far outside of the chord that we are vamping on. So let's take a listen to a phrase example that does exactly this. <laughs> Okay, so checking out this phrase now, of course, notice that we are playing this over a C dominant 7 chord now. So a C dominant 7 as opposed to a C major 7 in our previous phrase. We're starting off on the 5th and then we are moving down that Mixolydian scale before moving to that D flat 7, that outside substitution, that outside implied harmony. And notice what this part of the phrase actually does. So it starts on the D flat. So the root of the implied harmony that we ourselves in our phrase are implying 
starts on the root, and then it moves chromatically down to the seven. So it's establishing that implied harmony and making it sound really, really confident. From there, we move up the scale before using notes from the D flat mixolydian scale to enclose the third of the C7 chord. So you see that G flat, that F natural, and that E flat enclosing that E natural of the C7 chord, of course, providing us with a super, super strong resolution. And from there, we're back to our C mixolydian scale. Of course, it moves down, descends, lands on the seventh on beat three before resolving to the fifth in the next measure. That's of course important to note when you imply outside harmony, you are creating much more tension. So that resolution becomes all the more important. Speaking of tension, let's move on to our next phrase concept and that's going to be melodic cells. So the best way to think of a melodic cell is simply being a group of four notes. So I like to think of a cell being a smaller fragment of a phrase. So if we take those groups of four notes, what we can actually do is we can take a specific group of four notes and we can shift that around a little bit to create tension and release. Now, of course, when we're dealing with tension and release, that becomes super useful when we're playing over one chord vamps. So let's check out a one chord vamp phrase that utilizes melodic cells. <laughs> Okay, so what the heck is going on there? Well, let's break it down really quickly. I think you might find that it's simpler than you might think. So starting off, we play this chromatic cell. So we wanna try and treat this phrase in segments of four notes. So we want to break the phrase down into its melodic cells. So it starts there on the fourth of the C minor seven, and it descends chromatically down to the third or the minor third before returning to the fourth. Now. See if you notice anything similar about the next two beats. Well, the next two beats actually have that exact same shape. It's actually the exact same cell, just shifted up diatonically or shifted up a whole step. Now, looking to the first two beats of the next measure, we actually have the same melodic cell. Again, we just shift it down a half step. Now, because we're shifting it down a half step, we're getting much more outside of the harmony here. So we are creating much more tension with this particular melodic cell. And the second two beats of the second measure, we finally have some deviation from that melodic cell before we get to the first couple of beats of the third measure where we find a very, very similar cell to the one that we've been using in the beginning. Of course, the only difference to the first two beats of measure three compared to the melodic cell that we've been repeating beforehand is that instead of returning to the root or instead of returning to the first note of the melodic cell, we're moving up to that minor third, creating a slightly different sound. Once we play that cell, we use a little bit of chromaticism to resolve to the third of the minor seven chord before then sticking to that minor seven chord. There's no other melodic cells. We just want to make that resolution as strong as we possibly can. And sometimes just letting that minor chord in this case, or whichever chord that we are playing a one chord vamp over, Sometimes it's nice just to let that chord ring out at the end of your phrase, just to make that resolution extra confident. Okay, moving on to our next phrase concept now, and we're gonna be dealing with pentatonics. So let's go ahead and start with some inside pentatonics. So like all of our previous concepts, we're going to be dealing with implied harmony here. So we're going to be implying different pentatonics that fit nicely inside the C major seven chord in order to create different tensions and releases. So, here is a phrase that utilizes inside pentatonics. Okay, so checking this out right now, let's take a look at some of the inside pentatonics that we can play over a C major seven chord. Of course, we can see we've got E minor pentatonic, D minor pentatonic, and we've also got C major pentatonic as well. So three nice options there over the C major seven chord. Now taking a look at this phrase, we can also take a look at why those particular minor pentatonic scales work so well over the major seven chord. So looking at this, we start on the seventh of the major seven chord, but of course it is the fifth of our E minor pentatonic. There we move to the third of the E minor, fourth of the E minor, and then back 
to the seventh. So we're dealing with a lot of color tones. I like to think of these as color tones from the C major seven chord. So thinking of C major in terms of E minor, it just gives you a few nice shapes to work with. So you see the same thing with the D minor seven pentatonic. Of course, there we start on the root of the D minor seven, move down to the seventh, and then the fifth, and then the third. But in terms of our C major seven, we're dealing with the ninth, the root, the 13, and the fourth there. So another few of those color tones. Even when we look to the C major pentatonic, when we resolve to the fifth there on the first beat of measure three, we can see how we're able to extend our intervals a little more, right? We're able to use some different shapes when we're thinking of our lines in terms of the pentatonic scale. And of course, moving to the final measure there, we resolve to the seventh of C major seven, but like we started off, we're dealing with the fifth of the E minor pentatonic. So it gives this really, really cool sound and a really, really cool way to actually resolve our phrase, even though we're resolving on that implied harmony. Okay, with our next phrase concept, seeing as we looked at inside pentatonics, it's only fair that we go ahead and we actually look at some outside pentatonics. You can also think of this as pentatonic shifting. So this is where things can get really, really tense. And there's a bunch of cool sounds that we can go ahead and apply over one chord vamps using this particular concept. So let's go ahead and jump straight into this. Let's check out a phrase that utilizes these outside pentatonics. <laughs> So let's go ahead and actually break this down. But first of all, when it comes to pentatonic shifting, there's generally a couple of ways in which makes the concept really sound good and sound confident. And that is how we resolve or how do we shift in and out of keys. Now, one way is going to be by half step. So seeing as we're dealing with a C minor seven chord here, you'll notice in the first measure, the way we get from C minor seven to the B minor pentatonic is we go from the seventh of C minor seven to the seventh of B minor pentatonic. That's a half step. Now, the other way we can shift in and out of pentatonic scales is what happens between B minor and F sharp minor pentatonic. So you can see when we resolve to beat one of measure three, we can see that we resolve to that B, which is the fourth of F sharp minor pentatonic. Now think about how that relates to B minor pentatonic for a second. Well, of course, B is the root note of B minor pentatonic. And of course, like I mentioned, it's the fourth of that F sharp minor pentatonic. So that means B is a note in common. We can call them common tones. Now we can use these common tones to shift in and out of keys, as well as that half step shift that we saw from measure one to measure two. Of course, both ways are going to allow for really smooth voice leading, smooth and confident voice leading. So of course, I've gone over the resolution between measure one measure two, and then also the resolution between measure two and measure three. Let's look at how we get from F sharp minor to C minor here. So if you look at beats three and four of measure three, you can see we've got that B to A, and then we go down to the seventh of F sharp, which is E to the root, which is F sharp. And then from there, we can move down by a half step to the fourth or the 11th of C minor pentatonic. But of course, the 11th is not the greatest note to resolve a phrase. Of course, it's a great way to get back in to our home key, our, our home chord of C minor seven, but we're not going to resolve our phrase on the fourth. So you can see the phrase continues there. We move down to the third, back to the fourth. Then we have a couple of little skips before resolving to the root, a really, really hip and rhythmic way to actually resolve this phrase. Okay, last but not least, with our final concept, we're gonna continue on with the shifting theme, but now we're going to be dealing entirely with triads. So this concept is gonna be called triadic shifting. So triadic shifting, we're gonna treat it exactly like pentatonic shifting, just dealing with triads. So that might sound easy, but of course we're dealing with far less notes, therefore we can fit far more triads into one phrase. So let's check one out now.
Okay, so there's a whole bunch going on here, so let's break it down bit by bit. And of course, you can see the implied harmony as we move along there, but let's check it out real closely here. So of course, starting from the third of C major, and then we're playing a C major triad. So we're going three, one, five of the C major triad, and then we move down a half step to the F sharp. And that's how we get into our D triad. So we're moving up a whole step, playing a different permutation of D triad. So we've got the third, the root, the fifth, back to the third, and then from there we move up to the G sharp. So we're moving up another whole step. Now already we've got a pretty cool sounding phrase. So I personally really, really like moving around in whole steps. It kind of gives the, the sound of a rainbow in my opinion. So it, it's really cool that we can shove all these triads into the first part of the phrase and then move them around in whole steps. We get a really, really cool sound. Of course, from that E triad, we then move up another whole step to F sharp triad. And notice how we're just playing these triads in different permutations. So the order is not always one, three, five. It could be one, five, three. It could be one, and then we move down to the five and then way up to the three, all different orders of these triad notes. From F sharp, of course, we move up another whole step to A flat. Then we move up a half step to A, again, making note of all these different permutations. And then we move up another whole step from A to B. And then once we are on B triad, well, we can resolve nicely. You see that F sharp resolves nicely to G of the C major triad, because that G then drops down to the root note of C major. So with this phrase in particular, you can see how much other harmony we can actually imply over one chord vamps. There's really no limit to it. So I hope this gives you a good idea as to what you can do over one chord vamps that's a little more than just running up and down the chord scale. Of course, if you want to check out these phrases and much more phrases exactly like this, do feel free to check out the 68 phrases on one chord vamps PDF package written by the great Chad LB himself. I know I have an absolute blast practicing this kind of stuff, so I hope you guys do too. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to click the like, the subscribe, and of course the bell button so you get notifications when we post next. And feel free to suggest what you'd like us to cover next. Take care, everyone. I'll see you soon.